I just wanted to say a couple things about Andrew Tate. And if your first response is, oh, so you think it's all right to beat up women, do you? Please don't bother, because clearly no one's saying that. That shows that you have the mind of a small maggot. But I think there's a number of things at play. Number one, the freedom of choice to view the content you choose is also being removed, isn't it? Another freedom that we're losing along with a massive cohort of other freedoms all being taken from us. People actually effectively own the remote control to their own lives, don't they? If you don't want to watch his stuff, you have the choice not to watch it. And I would argue, having listened to my daughter bang on about what a misogynist he is, many of these critics have never actually watched an Andrew Tate video in their lives. They're just going by what is the group thinking. People love to join the mob. We see that when it was the French beheadings in public squares or the Puritans with their stocks. People love to turn up and throw tomatoes. It's a weird mentality, but that's exactly what's happened with this pylon, with people throwing stuff that have never watched Andrew Tate in their lives. Finally, people assume like the Centre for Countering Digital Hate Online or Hope Not Hate, that they're some kind of ambassadors of truth or ambassadors of hope. Take a little look behind those organisations and who's actually running them or fronting them up and you'll see things might not be quite the way they seem. I also think in an age where we lack strong male role models of any kind, is it any wonder our young lads are looking for someone who seems a bit male, who seems a bit macho? Is it any surprise? We've got a trans woman just about to win the female golf tour. We have a male as the period ambassador in Scotland. Police officers joining LGBT pride events just so they can dance and then get a video of themselves that might go viral. Where are the real tough men? And our boys must have a thirst for seeing some content from them. It's the reason so many of us, myself included, loved the Canadian truckers and their protest against Trudeau because they were real men with big beards and it was minus 20 and they turned up in their t-shirts in their big trucks and camped there for weeks because they weren't going to be told what to do with their massive testicles sliding in the snow as they went. That was so appealing because we never get to see real men anymore. And you know, most of all, I wish we would accord young people with the respect that they deserve. They can watch this stuff and still make their own minds up and make their own decision. What these people do, hope not hate the Centre for Countering Digital Hate Online, what they do actually is they underestimate young people. They underestimate young boys. They say, no, you're not smart enough to make up your own decisions about the stuff you watch, so we're going to ban it altogether. I think young people are way smarter than people give them credit for. They should have the freedom to choose. And most of all, you know what I think this is about? People don't like the success of others. It's jealousy. Small people make themselves feel better by trying to stop someone who's more successful. Andrew Tate's three billion views are what a lot of these little cockwombles dream of. And they can't stand that someone else is more successful to them than them. So their version of success is to get rid of him altogether. And I think it's a great shame. To our young lads, yes, you do need strong male role models. And I'm bloody sorry there aren't more of them out there for you. To the people who got rid of Andrew Tate, I think it's your lack of success that makes you jealous of his. And I think finally we have to question, why aren't we being allowed the freedom to choose? The removal of Andrew Tate is not a win. It's another sad indictment and another loss of freedoms that we all used to enjoy.